The Nintendo Switch has very much been lacking in games recently. So much so, the other day I actually cleaned my house out of boredom. Any gamer should know that it is a bad sign if you turn to cleaning your house rather than playing a game. That was where I was at until I got this game. It is currently too hot to do anything other than sit in the shade and game. So this game came to me at a great time of need. Also, don't come for us Brits, okay? Let us complain about the weather. It is like the only thing we can do, okay? I was playing this game so long yesterday, I accidentally went to bed at 4 a.m. Today, we're talking about Let's Build a Zoo. This game is currently out on PC, but it will be coming out on Nintendo Switch in September of this year. And I could not be more excited. This game is perfect for the Switch. We don't know the sale price quite yet on the Nintendo Switch, but it's currently only 15 pounds on Steam, and it's gonna fill all your comfy, cozy needs and make you laugh what more can you want this game sees you build a zoo i know shocking this game doesn't win any creativity points for its name let's be honest <laughs> the game starts off by asking you to name your zoo so of course i named mine spicy farm because what is a zoo if it's not just a spicy farm and then you're given a plot of land two bunnies and told off you go time to make a great zoo and although if i were to list off all the things you can micromanage this game seems daunting it really isn't if you've played games like planet zoo this game will seem like a walk in a park it's a lot more casual than that game is don't get me wrong i love planet zoo but there's nothing comfy and cozy about being told your bear has escaped its enclosure and is attacking people. This game sees you take charge of basically every single aspect of owning a zoo. You build the enclosure, you hire staff, you place the shops, you decorate, and you're even in charge of setting the ticket price and managing the bus routes. But the nice thing about this game is it introduces each concept bit by bit at the beginning, and before you know it, you're already acquainted with every single mechanic in the game. The game's progression is kind of done through research points. You kind of get these over time as your zoo progresses, and and you can spend the points on unlocking more things. This can be anything from more types of decoration items to things that can make your animals happy or new enclosures so you can hold more types of animal. Which brings me on to my next point the animals now this game kind of handles animals a little differently to how i've seen other zoo type games deal with them each animal has a series of different breeds you can access by cross breeding the animals and once you get the nursery it gets a little bit easier as you can pick specific breeding pairs to pair together giving you a better chance at getting some of the rarer colors colors patterns breeds it's the same thing in this game to get completely new types of animal though you have to rely on trading with other zoos unlike planet zoo this doesn't mean trading with real life humans this just means trading with like fictional other zoos which makes me feel less anxious basically they ask for one of the rarer types of breeds of a certain type of animal and in return they'll give you two common types of an animal you don't already have you can also get animals for free by rescuing them from shelters i actually like this kind of way of progressing Progressing your animal types it means you can't get ahead of yourself too fast which i really like and it makes you explore the breeding mechanics that you might not do if you had access to all the different types of animals from the beginning this is where things get interesting though once you have obtained every single breed of one species of animal you can splice their dna with another species of animal and it is horrifying so far none of my mixed animal breeds have been cute they've all been mortifying <laughs> They're so bad. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know if they're actually gonna end up eating each other. I've just made one of every type. I put them in the same pen and I hope for the best. So far, they're all alive and well, as well as you can be when you're like half duck, half snake. <laughs> But it's little things like this, the little pieces of character in this game that has made me love it so much. I didn't expect any of this when I got this game. I was like, oh, cute. Look at this little pixelated zoo game. It's so fun. And then you come across stuff like that. Don't worry, there's plenty more character where that came from. To keep the animals happy, you give them things called enrichment items. Again, you can unlock more of these with research points. And these are things like balls, boulders to climb, or my personal favorite, the trampoline. Look at them go. <laughs> Nothing cracks you up at 3 a.m. in the morning more than seeing 20 geese trying to jump on a trampoline at the same time. The game also has plenty of goals for you to work towards, each of which giving you monetary rewards when you hit them. 
Some of them are really easy and you can do them in a matter of seconds. Some of them take a while to do, especially considering the research points are like randomly done. So they're not the same every single time you start a zoo, meaning that you can't already plan out when you're going to unlock certain things because you have no idea where they're going to be. Despite all these different mechanics going on, this game never makes me feel rushed. There's been a few instances where it's like, bro, you need to like feed your animals, but nothing seems like life or death situations, which I quite like. It makes playing it before you go to sleep a nice experience and not a, oh man, I just murdered like seven people. Another cool thing about this game is there are moral choices. Bet you didn't expect that from a zoo game, did you? But wait until you hear what some of the moral choices are. These can range from things like having an exotic animal dealer show up at your zoo and you have to choose whether you want to buy animals from them, sell animals to the black market, or you can report them to the police and get them yeeted out of your zoo, each of which comes with either positive or negative moral points. I particularly like the options coming up offering to paint your animals to look like more exotic creatures. Genius, really, isn't it? You can then use these points to buy different items that are only unlocked if you go along a certain path. For example, if you go along the good moral choices, you do things like saving the environment, and work to releasing animals back into the wild. Pick the bad moral choices and you can turn your animals into meat. I freaking love this game. <laughs> I picked the bad moral choice once. That was because someone was offering to stop animal testing by stealing humans from your zoo and testing on them instead. Y you gotta do what you gotta do, okay? I was protecting the animals. Full disclosure, I have by no means finished this game. There is so much more left to explore. It is a sandbox game and I've put many hours into this game because I love it. And you know what? This video might be edited slightly later because I ended up playing this till 3 a.m. again. If this video isn't out on Wednesday, you know, that's true. <laughs> so far, I haven't explored half the things you can research. And also, I haven't even delved into opening another zoo on top of my current zoo because you can have more than one in different countries. As you can see, I have been loving this game. This game is going to fit in perfectly for the Nintendo Switch, and especially if it stays around the £15 mark too. And the best thing about this new game is they definitely thought outside of the Stardew box. Both with gameplay and with graphics. Oh, and if you want to see another zoo game come to the Nintendo Switch, click here. Only this one has a lot more drama associated to it. I'll see you next time. Bye.